Today I'm going to show you how to remove a blown up wheel bearing. You can see this rear wheel bearing on this wheel completely blew up. Here's the inner race. We have the spacer in the middle, the ball bearings, and the outer race is still pressed into the wheel. So what we got to do is we got to put this back together somewhat so we can pull it out. But the first thing to do on this wheel is pull the sprocket off. Now that our sprocket's off, we can access the bearing a lot easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove this inner spacer. And you want to try to salvage as many of these ball bearings as you can. If they fall out, just get them. You want to get all these ball bearings. We're going to use these to put it back together. Just take a magnet and try to get in here and see if you find any other ball bearings. So if not, it'll drive you crazy while you're riding. You're going to hear a little tink, 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 tink bouncing around in there. Fish around in there. Make sure you don't have any ball bearings or even little pieces of scrap metal. So once we get the bearing back together, we're going to be using a wheel bearing puller. I got this one off Amazon. I'll drop a link down below. If you don't have uh, one of these pullers, um, if the bearing's blown up, you could actually uh, knock out the other bearing with a long punch and a hammer. Uh, it's not that easy, but it's doable. But I highly suggest getting one of these pullers makes life easier. It also comes with the installers. All right, so we got all the bell bearings that we could find out of the wheel. Uh, we got the race. And then what we're going to be using is some grease. Uh, it doesn't really matter what type of grease. There's something that's sticky and tacky because we're going to try to reassemble this bearing enough to use the puller because it's a real pain in the butt to get that outer race out. Um, a few other tricks you could do, you could try welding something to it and then knock it out from the other side. Um, you could try getting in there and cutting it in half so that it falls out, but this to me seems like the easiest way. So I'm gonna just put a bunch of grease on this race. And we're also gonna take some of our grease and we're gonna put it here inside that race. Give something for the bearings to stick to so we don't lose them down in the wheel. Like so. And then with your, with your ball bearings, stick them in that race. What we could do is you could just put them all on one side and then with a pocket screwdriver, we can move them around to where we need them to be. All right, so we got our race with our ball bearings. We got our inner race. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in here like that. Support, support the race. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna just move these ball bearings around, space them out evenly to distribute the load. So there we go. We got one, two, three, four, five, six bearings, and that race is in there. I'm gonna bring you in for a little closer look. So you can see we got the bearings in here. You got one, two, three, four, five, six. Just wanna make them spaced out evenly. You can kind of feel some of them might be a little loose. Just want them to all be about the same. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our wheel bearing puller. We're gonna loosen this nut out here. What that does is that loosen, that relieves this tension on this collet. When you tighten this down, it pulls this in and flares these out, and that's what grabs a hold of that race. So back that off so that you could press that in there. Like that. And then what we need to do is we need to tighten up that that bolt for the tapered, tapered bolt. So just run that nut down and then from the back side, hold that Allen and snug that up. All right, so I got that Allen installed through the wheel on the other side. I'm gonna just snug up this nut here. Not too tight, just snug enough. Uh, it's always a good practice to oil up the threads of your of your installer or your remover, whatever your tools are. So oil the threads, 
I made a few modifications to this tool. It didn't really come with the with the bearing right here. So I just put two hardened washers with some grease between it. So then go ahead and run that down. Hold the bolt and tighten down the nut. If it feels like it's not gonna go right away, take some time and heat up the wheel, which I think we're gonna do. It's pretty cold, so you know, we're going to heat up this aluminum and let it expand away from the steel bearing. So just take your time and just heat up the wheel. It's another reason why it's good to take the, the sprocket and the, the brake disc off. Makes it easier to get right onto the aluminum to heat it up. Alright, so we've been heating this wheel up for a few minutes. Hopefully that's long enough. You want to listen there's like a specific cracking noise you hear when a bearing breaks loose it's kind of like a like a pop take a quick peek in here Looks like the bearing's coming out. Just gonna keep on cranking this down here. There we go. The bearing came out just like that. So we're going to get ready to remove uh, the brake side bearing. But what we need to do is we need to get this other bearing off. So what you do is you just back off that uh, nut for the, for the tapered bolt. Grab a hold of this and wiggle and pull and it should come off like that. There you go. Here's our blown up wheel bearing that we put back together. And would you look at that? Still kind of works. Not really. All right, we're just going to repeat the process here. All right, there's that bearing. So once you get your bearings out, go ahead and inspect the bores of the wheel. Make sure there's no, you know, pitting or sometimes the bearing will go in tight at the lip and then it just falls right in because the bearing like wore out the, the hub here in the wheel. So just make sure, you know, once again that there's no debris floating around in there, no ball bearings, because um, you will hear it banging around in this hollow aluminum wheel. All right, well, we got some new wheel bearings. We even got a new uh, uh, center spacer. So we're going to go ahead and get those installed in the wheel now. All right, so we got our wheel bearings out. We're going to take our new wheel bearings and we're going to go ahead and uh, put some motor oil on these. Just smear some motor oil around the bearings and smear some motor oil inside uh, the bore of the hub. Do it on both sides of the wheel. Put it on both bearings. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our long bolt from our install kit with the big flat washer, and that's gonna get inserted from the other side of the wheel, like that. And you always wanna start on the brake disc side. You wanna put this bearing in, that's gonna bottom it out. It's gonna get pressed all the way into this bottom lip of the wheel, and then the spacer sets the, the spacing for the opposite side. But always put on the brake side bearing first. Uh, Harley calls it the primary side bearing, but that kind of gets confusing because you think of the primary drive, but primary meaning the primary brake disc, like the main brake disc. So like in your front wheel, you got two 
two uh, discs, it's going to be the left-hand side. If you were to pull this disc off, there'll be a line scored in the hub, and that indicates the primary side, what side you put your bearing in first. And then now we're going to take our new bearing. We got it installed on the little collet here. It's got a step like this. You put the bearing on there. Okay, I always, I always put the bearing so that the, the part numbers face out. Slide that onto the bolt. And you're gonna have one of these little bearing setups here. If, you, if your kit doesn't come with the bearing, you could run two washers with some grease in between. That works with the washer here. You put on the nut. Run that down. Once again, put some oil or grease on the threads here so they don't gall up on you. All right, then get whatever wrenches you need, uh, a socket and a ratchet on one side, and then uh, an open end wrench or an adjustable over here to run that down. I like to stand the wheel up like this and have it up against my stomach right here so I could tighten it down and it forces against me so I can get some good leverage on there. So you're not wrestling it, wrestling the wheel, you know, across the table or across the floor or something. So you go like that. And all you're gonna do is just run the bearing in. Make sure that that bearing goes in nice and square. You know, that the bearing's not like walking in crooked, that it's going in nice and straight. Just run that in until it stops. Like that. Now it's bottomed out. Just give it a little extra, snug it up. And we're gonna back it off. And do the other side. Take all that stuff off. Go ahead and look in your bearing. Make sure it spins good. Make sure that it look that it's set in there nice and flush, or not flush, but evenly down in there. Remember, this side gets bottomed out into the wheel. You're gonna spin your wheel around and get ready to do this side. This is the side that blew up. It did kind of mess up the wheel a little bit down here in the bottom, but it didn't compromise this step down here. And it didn't compromise the, the, the bore of the hub. So we're good. So the same thing, what we gotta do is we gotta get our new spacer and put that in first. So we got our new spacer here on top. Always put your new and old parts together, compare them, make sure they're the same. Uh, Harley does make a lot of different sizes depending on what wheels and what vehicle. So just make sure, you know, you got the right one. Parts guys do mi mix parts up sometimes. So just do, do your due dil diligence and make sure you got the right stuff. So then take this new sleeve. Um, if you wanted to, you could put some, some motor oil on the outside. I mean, I think it is treated, they don't rust, but it doesn't hurt, just oil it up. And then with your finger, I don't know if you could see that, I got my finger poked, poked through the bearing on the other side to catch the sleeve so it doesn't drop down in the wheel. So get that, you know, you could have it bound, if you have it like this, it's hitting the wheel. You need to lift it up and drop it in, make sure it makes contact with the bearing on the other side, like that. And we're going to install our, our tool. With the, so we got the bolt with the big washer on the other side. We got our bearing oiled up with the letters facing out. Put on our installer. Bearing. Washer. Nut. I want to thank you guys for checking out the video. Go ahead and uh, hit like if this has helped you so far. Drop a comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Once again, like I said, I'm going to put the link to this kit down in the in the description. Um, it is a affiliate link, so you know I might make a little commission if you buy it, but it doesn't change the price for you at all. All right, so we got our ratchet on the other side. Uh, we're going to go ahead and run this down. OK, 
Okay, right there, I'm just going finger tight. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and give it a little bit more, maybe maybe a quarter, a quarter turn, and then back it off, and then we're gonna check to make sure that uh, the bearing preload is good. These, uh, these don't get set up like an old tapered uh, Timken style bearing where you have to set the end plane and everything. You just press it in, but you could press it too tight where it's loading up the bearing and it won't rotate, or you could set it up too loose where the sleeve inside jingles around. Okay, so we're gonna take out all of our tools. Gonna make sure that our, our sleeve is in there nice and straight. Sometimes it gets a little crooked on the installation. Um, what you could do is you could take your axle and you could feed your axle through to straighten it up. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get it lined up here. Make sure your axle goes through nice and nice and smooth. Okay. Make sure your sleeve doesn't move around too much okay so we could go a little bit more what you should be able to do is turn the opposite bearing and this bearing move there's not a whole lot of side to side but there is some up and down so I'm gonna just snug this bearing up just a little bit more just install all this stuff again Better, it's better to start on the loose side and snug it up a little bit at a time than tr go too far because you can't really loosen it up without pulling the bearing back out and you really don't want to do that. Okay, so I'll we'll probably give this maybe another quarter to a half a turn. Check our spacer. We don't have that up and down movement anymore. Make sure that our axle goes in. See, now I could turn the opposite bearing, and you can see this one turning. I don't know if you guys can see that. So that means our, our uh, you know, preload press fit is good. All right, there you go. Thanks again.